Every business owner needs to know how to read a balance sheet and I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, a balance sheet tells you the health of a business at any snapshot in time. This is the basic formula of a balance sheet. The assets will always equal the liabilities and the equity. If they don't balance, it's not a very good balance sheet. It really should balance, especially in today's day and age with accounting software. So there's pretty much no reason it shouldn't balance, even though just because it balances doesn't mean it's healthy. There could be some weird journal entries and other things in there to make it balanced. Oh, and one other thing to talk about is that in accounting, everything has a double entry. This is just good accounting concept to grasp. So a simple example, I buy a truck for $20,000. So my fixed assets will go up $20,000 because I bought a truck and my cash, let's just assume I use cash, the cash goes down $20,000. So there's two entries for the purchase of the truck. And so think about it in those terms, there's always two entries for everything. So with that said, when the balance sheet is correctly maintained, it tells us, is the business liquid? Is the business solvent? Is the business stable? All of these answers can be found in the balance sheet. I spent a few years at the beginning of my career auditing financial statements. When you start auditing financial statements, the first thing you do on a balance sheet is you check the opening balances match the closing balances. Now, if you're watching this video because you want to buy a small business, don't worry too much about it. Assume that's correct for now, and you can always check that in diligence. But that's the kind of the starting point to make sure that the balances are correct at the beginning, and then you look at what's happened. Now, once we've verified the starting point, we can actually verify the key line items in a balance sheet. So auditors spend a lot of time auditing things like cash, accounts receivable, inventory and accounts payable. These are like the big line items in a balance sheet. You know how we talked about everything has a double entry in accounting? Well, as you audit the line items in the balance sheet, as you reconcile them, there is always a double entry. So for example, let me put that in perspective. If you're going through your accounts receivable, which is money coming into you from your customers, and you find that there's money in there that was due to you a year ago from a customer who has since closed their doors, no longer around, that is not a real accounts receivable. So you need to remove that from your accounts receivable, but because of that double entry we talked about, the other entry of that goes to the P&L. It's a bad debt expense. Now, the point is you're making the balance sheet correct, and as a result, you're having this knock-on impact on some of the double entries into the profit and loss. So you're making the other financial statements more accurate as you're checking the balance sheet. So for you accounting nerds out there, that entry that we just talked about is a credit to AR and a debit to the P&L for the bad debt expense that we talked about. Are you overwhelmed in your journey into small business ownership? If so, look no further than my inner circle. The inner circle is the best way to accelerate your journey into small business ownership. We are a community of small business buyers offering the best in education, community, and accountability to change your life. Book a discovery call with me today and let's talk. Link is just below. So the wider point that I want you to take away is as we check the balance sheet and we true up the balance sheet that we're making the other financial statements more accurate, which is a good thing. It doesn't really work in the reverse. I mean, you could check the P&L, you get a breakdown of the receipts if you were checking it, but it doesn't have the same kind of flow through to the balance sheet as starting with a balance sheet and then flowing through to the P&L. This is a much better way to do it this way. Things the balance sheet tells us, is the business liquid? What do I mean by that? I mean, can the business pay its debts as they become due? Does the business have enough cash or will it have enough cash to satisfy its near-term obligations? The really good way to check this is look at the current assets. Current assets are either cash or things that will be cash within the next year. And then look at that as it relates to the current liabilities, which is things that need to be paid out in the next year. So are the things that will be cash, are they greater than the things that need to be paid in the next year? Hopefully the answer is yes. And looking at these two things is called the current ratio. So it's current assets over current liabilities. It should definitely be over one because you want this number to be higher than this number. And so that's one way to look, is the business liquid? There's actually, Part B of that is something called the quick ratio, which is where you subtract inventory from the current assets. The reason is not all inventory is super quick to be sold. And so a really like quick like acid test to see if the business is liquid, you take the current assets, less the inventory, and then you do it over the current liabilities as well. That is called the quick ratio. So either the current ratio or the quick ratio are really good ways to see if the business is liquid, if they're gonna run into any cash issues in the near term. What else does the balance sheet tell us? The balance sheet also tells us how solvent the business is over the long term. So solvency I think of as a more of a longer term issue. If you had some assets, some fixed assets, say some trucks that are worth $20,000, it's not that much in terms of trucks, but let's say you had long term debt of $100,000, 
well, your assets are kind of underwater against the debt. So I would say that business isn't really solvent. It's not really going to be around for the long run unless they do some big restructuring of the long-term debt on the balance sheet. And these are non-current assets and non-current liabilities. So these aren't the quick ones that turn to cash or go out from cash within a year. These are the longer-term assets and liabilities. That's my next check. That's the next thing I'm looking for on the balance sheet. The other thing I get asked a lot about is equity. And because I work in the world of small business acquisition, people want to know how much businesses are worth. So you'd be forgiven for thinking you could go straight to the equity section of the balance sheet and say, okay, it is $200,000, therefore the business is worth $200,000. Well, in the world of small business acquisition, companies are valued nine times out of 10 on a multiple of cash flow. So that's not true. So in a way, the equity section on a balance sheet can be misleading. However, if you're looking at multiple balance sheets, say the end of last year and at the end of the year before and the end of the year before that, what you really wanna check is that equity is going up each time because what happens, the net income that's on the profit and loss, that's the profit after everything's paid, will flow to the equity section on the balance sheet at the end of each year. So you really wanna see that going up each year. And so by doing a quick check on the equity section, you wanna make sure that equity isn't diminishing over time, that would be a bad sign, but the equity is a very useful data point on the balance sheet. Another reason why accountants love balance sheets is it gives you an indication of what the rest of the accounting's like. So if that balance sheet is super messy, then you know that the rest of the financial statements are probably really messy too. So it gives you a glimpse, a window into the rest of the accounting and bookkeeping processes. So why do accountants love balance sheets? They love them because as they check the balance sheet, they get a glimpse into the accounting, they can make the other financial statements more accurate, it gives you a glimpse into the near-term liquidity, whether it can pay near-term obligations based on the cash at hand. It also gives you an idea of the longer-term solvency of the business. Is the business gonna be around for a long time? And it also gives you some idea on the equity. So yes, that doesn't equal the value of the company, but it does tell you on like a breakup basis, if you sold everything, you know, if you sold the assets and then you paid off all the liabilities, what would be left? That doesn't equal the value of the company, but it is a useful data point. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to join an amazing community to help you with your small business acquisition, you know what to do. Book a discovery call with me below. Thank you for watching. This is James, the Business Buying Brit, signing out.